Colin, thank you very much for joining Energy Live News. Uh, one of the findings of your recent study suggests that cleaning products could expose people to pollution particles at the same rate as a car exhaust. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, in this study, we simulated, you know, cleaning in the indoor environment um, by using these cleaning products that we can buy from the store. And then, you know, we did mopping for about 12 to 14 minutes. And then from here, we looked at, you know, the emissions. And then we saw that, you know, not only are there gaseous emissions or, you know, scents coming out from these cleaning products, but there's also particles um, that are being produced as well um, during this mopping period. And so for us, that was a little bit striking, not only because, you know, you always associate particles or, you know, with, with smoke particles or um, burning, um, but this one, there was no burning during this time, but we still saw these particles formed and the particles that formed are very small. Uh, so they started with, you know, very small particles that could potentially go deep into your lungs. And then, you know, as time went by, they, you know, grew into bigger particles. But I guess the most striking part, one is that uh, we were able to see these particles that we usually associate with, uh, you know, vehicle exhaust or um, burning and, you know, processes like that. And then the second one is the time it took for these particles to form. Um, since the chemistry behind this is kind of already known in the outdoor environment, you know, um, these chemical species from the cleaning products, um, some of them are of the same chemical species, such as, you know, what comes out of trees or um, what we call terpenes or monoterpenes. Um, they also can come out of trees, but in the outdoor environment, it takes a longer time for this chemistry to occur. But in what we saw, this chemistry occurred very quickly in the order of minutes. So, um, yeah, I think those are the two, you know, main uh, surprising things <laughs> is that, you know, you can see this type of chemistry even if there's no burning inside the home and that it's very quick <laughs> and you know it, you could get exposed to these number of particles um, in a very short amount of time. Colin, uh, can you give us uh, just uh, to understand the scale of uh, the exposure that uh, we are in using these cleaning products? Can you give us some comparison in terms of uh, the emissions uh, you know from a vehicle and uh, the air pollutants, the, the pollution particles from these uh, cleaning products. Uh, I mean, you have performed real-time observations in real-time indoor conditions, and you use the commercial cleaning products to mop surfaces. How much of these cleaning products, you know, you use in order to understand that this is the same, exactly the same, with the amount of emissions that we get from a vehicle? Yeah, so what we the amount of product that we used here was the same as what the instructions on the label were. So I believe it was like 90 milliliters, one fourth cup per gallon. So basically the uh, amount that we used is what you would normally mix in this cleaning product with water and use to, you know, clean the surfaces. And so compared to the amount of particles that were produced from this cleaning product. Um, it's like, uh, you know, you're standing outside a, what we call a street canyon, um, which you can imagine as, you know, a busy road um, surrounded by tall buildings and kind of like where uh, pollutants or particles could be trapped within. Um, and so it's like you're standing in that street canyon for, say, you know, an equivalent or a longer amount of time. So say, for example, you were cleaning for an hour. It's like you're breathing in the same number of particles as if you were standing in that uh, street canyon for an hour to about, you know, six hours. So in that short amount of time, it's almost equivalent to what you would get in the outdoor environment where you associate, you know, burning particles or like particles from vehicle exhaust. I would like to ask you uh, specifically uh, regarding the health risks uh, for the people, because we all uh, know that uh, we all use, you know, these cleaning products more, especially during the pandemic because of uh, the restrictions and because, you know, of course, yeah. all these uh, protocols that we have uh, to follow. So uh, what are the implications specifically for all of us that we use these cleaning products during this period? Yeah, so during this time that, you know, we, we kind of excessively clean, even though we 
kind the science has already been established that the transmission is mostly through through airborne um, and surfaces don't really play that much um, role in the transmission of COVID. And I think, you know, main effect to our health is, you know, once, say, for example, when these particles get very deep into our lungs, um, you know, they can cause inflammation and other um, respiratory health outcomes. And then the very, very small particles can cause exchange with your bloodstream. And so the smaller these particles get, the more health effects they can give to you. And then there's also been uh, sh uh, studies shown that, um, you know, particles are attributed to, you know, cardiovascular um, diseases. Um, and so there's the short-term effects of, you know, irritation to your um, nose and irritation to, you know, the upper respiratory system. And then there's also the chronic or long-term effects of inflammation of the lungs or as, as the particles get deeper into your lungs, they could affect even, you know, cardiovascular health. So as I can understand, your study implies that people who have worked heavily with uh, disinfectants sprays uh, during uh, especially COVID uh, pandemic might have been exposed to bigger risk for their own health, right? Yeah. So just because of the amount that they are, amount of time that they are exposed to these products. So say, for example, it's their, um, you know, job to clean. Um, if you factor in the amount of time that they get exposed to these products, that that kind of adds up to the you know, whole amount of particles and not only the particles, but, you know, the what we call the primary emissions, which are the initial gaseous emissions to the air from the cleaning product itself. Uh, do you think that there is a specific uh, substance of these uh, cleaning products that make them, uh, you know, uh, very polluting and very dangerous for human health? So in our study, we focused mainly on what we call monoterpenes, which are uh, simple terms are, you know, citrus scented or pine scented. Um, so they are a group of chemicals that are um, that have a special kind of chemical reaction with ozone. And that's kind of the other part of the picture. It's not just the monoterpenes, but when they react with ozone in the air, even with very low amounts, which what we have here in the study or what we saw here in the study, even if they react in the very small amounts of ozone, um, they get to produce this much. Um, so it's because, you know, they're very reactive towards ozone. Um, and so these, you know, citrus scented, pine scented, um, and there's, uh, you know, it's a whole list of uh, what we call monoterpenes, but basically the most prevalent are um, citrus scented chemicals. My last question for you is, uh, which was the most striking finding uh, during this uh, study? And uh, what are your next steps? Uh, do you plan, I mean, to uh, continue this study in probably uh, in another kind of product? Yeah, I think the most striking part here is that this particle formation was formed very quickly in the indoor environment. And... Um, the amount that was formed was uh, similar to what you would be exposed for an equivalent or a longer amount of time in the outdoors. And we don't typically think of, you know, cleaning products as a source of particles, right? We always think, oh, burning candle or, you know, vehicle exhaust, because you always see dark smoke and you think, oh, pollution. But you don't really think of other, if you don't see it, sometimes you don't think that, oh, it's actually polluting. In the indoor environment, there's low amounts of ozone and even this low amount of ozone can lead to this particle formation if you use so much of cleaning products. And then another is that, you know, the particles that are formed are the smaller particles and that's what you were initially exposed to during this mopping period. And then um, as for a uh, future exploration of, of these, this was done in Indiana University when I was still in Indiana University. And so some of my co-authors are in Indiana University and some of the co-authors are in Purdue. Um, and so they've since, you know, have, you know, explored a lot of other um, indoor chemistry stuff. And so there are plans to kind of further explore on the other, um, not just cleaning, but, you know, any, all of the other activities that we do inside our home that we don't typically think of 
uh, as being a source of major pollution inside the home. And uh, so, yeah, they, they have been working on other uh, activities to explore as well. <laughs> Colin, thank you very much for your time. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Really interesting <laughs> chat. Thank you. <laughs>